Welcome, Ordinates, to the official Pillars of Eternity Let's Play. It's game time, baby. Pillars of Eternity with the White March expansion. I just didn't have it installed. It was given to I, at least most of the backers of the higher tiers for free. I also have another copy of Pillars of Eternity, a digital copy that I am going to give away at some point during this Let's Play. I'm not going to say what video it's in now. I will eventually allude to clues and then we will do a giveaway on an unsaid video. Possibly video 69. I don't know. That's just off the top of my head. Anyways, look forward to that. Free copy, and it's going to be for someone that does not own it. Or has never played it. But because of my Let's Play, is really excited to play it. So, if you don't yet own Pillars of Eternity and you want a chance to win it for free, you got to watch the whole LP. Let's enjoy some of this goddamn delicious fucking music. Already feel my penis tingle. All right. Well, I know everyone is ready to get this adventure on the road. News. We got news, guys. We'll be playing on normal. And let's go ahead and listen to this short but sweet intro. Looks like we get a stronghold. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. All right. Let's make our character. So it is midnight, more or less, my time. Friday morning. So, as I said, I'd wait till Friday. Luglug was a very obvious winner. Lots of you voted for Dwarf, some of you voted for the Amara, some of you voted for Ronstock, and you mean Lo Wang got a vote or two. You have no mess with the Lo Wang. But it was quite obvious that Luglug is going to be the winner for this. However, I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit of the Game Hoarder Trump card because, well, let me get into it. We did a Dwarf Lug Lug and Dragon Age. Dwarfs are a common race in almost every RPG we've played. So I, I think I'm going to pull a Trump card here and force the, the Amwa, who is a unique race to this game. And I'd like to explore that and give Lug Lug a chance to be something new. Um, plus, look at him. He's a lot bigger. It just makes more sense to take advantage of that and the fact that we get plus two might. The largest of the kith races, commonly found in or near oceans. They're not truly aquatic. They have the affinity for water in many of their civilizations, such as Rawatai, are based on naval dominance. They are known for their unparalleled strength. 
We'll go with the island of Amoa because, let's face it, Luglug -Lug was born on the hot sands of Ath Athos in the uh, Dark, Set Dark Sun setting campaign. So I like this brown skin and I did some play testing, of course, and the coastals, you can't ever get away from that blue skin. And it's, that's not a racist thing, I'm just saying we're going to go with the brown skins this time. I just, I can get that... That dark sun tan, that leathery hide skin that Luglug -Lug was born with. Island Hamwa originated in the Deadfire Archipelago a thousand miles south of the Valayan Republics. While physiologically similar to their coastal cousins, the coloration of Island Hamwa is starkly different. Brown and yellow contrasting the coastal blues and green. Though still uncommon in the Deerwood and surrounding environments, Island Hamwa are more commonly encountered there than the coastal Hamwa who are quite rare. When encountered around the Darewood, they are often laborers, fishermen, or sailors. We will start with the Armed Teeth, which is going to give us an additional weapon set. Now, I will admit, I have done some very slight research, but I've got a lot of good pointer and starting tips from Mr. Satan, uh, who I'd like to go ahead and take this moment to give a quick shout out to. If you didn't watch the intro video, I am going to dedicate this Let's Play to Mr. Satan and his lovely wife, Mrs. Satan. I don't know if he wants me to say her name or not. Uh, but anyways, this is for you too. Um, Mr. Satan, if you guys aren't familiar with him, has been a follower since uh, probably maybe a year into me LPing or, or more. So he's been around almost a decade with the game hoarder. So uh, he loves this game, and this one's for him and his wife. We're going to obviously be barbarian. Duh. Brutes! Madmen! Berserkers! Though city-dwelling people often use the term barbarian with a dose of disrespect, these rural warriors are respected by the communities for their ferocity and fearsome presence on the battlefield. Barbarians have a special, almost religious role in some cultures, but in many places, the undisciplined, fearless style of the barbarian is simply how warriors conduct themselves. We will get the starting ability of Carnage. When I hit with melee attacks, they automatically make reduced damage attacks at all other enemies within a short distance. We'll get a boost to our athletics and survival. We'll have great health and endurance and average accuracy, and we don't care about getting hit so much, not really. Now, I did do a little research as far as statistics, so if you wonder where I am about to uh, distribute my attributes in the, the way I'm going to, well, A, it sounded good, and it sounded like a good Lug Lug build. It was actually made for a dwarf, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it, take it to the Amua race, and we'll roll with it. We can choose between Frenzy, which gives us... Uh, plus four might, plus four con, but you'll notice that our deflection goes down quite a bit. So it's the same as any frenzy barbarian, barbarian attack. We're gonna be able to hit more strong, do more damage, but open ourselves up weaker defense. I am sipping on some Houston Haze for all you craft beer fans. Houston Haze is a delicious beer, obviously made here in Houston. Great one. Great go-to. Considered a hazy, hazy, juicy IPA. Barbaric Yell is kind of your AoE Frightened spell. It's another Frightened ability. It's another thing that is pretty common. So we'll go ahead and pick Frenzy. Alright, here we go. So first thing... I'm going to explain these based off of the build that I ripped off of Reddit. But I'm going to go ahead and pump everything up first. Okay, and since I'm... Uh, since I'm Amu, I'm not a dwarf, I had an extra point there to distribute. So might, that's pretty obvious. 
represents our physical and spiritual strength, brute force, as well as our ability to channel powerful magic. It can be useful for intimidating displays and acts of brute force. In combat, it contributes to damage and healing, as well as fortitude and defense. So highly recommended for a barbarian, as is constitution. We're going to max both those out. Constitution is a combination of the character's overall health and stamina. Although it's not used much in interactions, it is sometimes checked to withstand pain or endurance, the physical taxing ordeal. In combat, it affects maximum health and endurance and contributes to the fortitude defense. Dex is an abstraction of a character's hand-eye coordination, balance, and overall grace. In interactions, it can be used for sleight of hand and fast reactions. In combat, it affects the character's action speed with all attacks, spells, and abilities and contributes to the reflex defense. Perception represents the character's senses as well as our instinctive ability to pick on details. And interactions can be used to catch someone in a lie, make them observant, comment about their appearance, or to notice something happening in the background in combat. It contributes to accuracy and reflex defense and grants a bonus to interrupt. Still want to be pretty de decent at our perception. And as a barbarian and a killer of the wasteland, Lug Lug should have a good aptitude at perception. Intelligence, this is where things go downhill. Now, obviously, um, barbarians are not going to be that intelligence, even Lug Lug more or less so. So I thought this fit well with the Lug Lug persona. Um, apparently, this goes well a good build if we plan on doing corpse-eating barbarians, which, of course, corpse-eating sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, the reason why we went so low with Resolve is because... The lower the resolve you have, the better for you, but the more worse for the enemies. Uh, I guess with Barbaric Retaliation, uh, we will take our critical hits and it'll allow us to ferociously strike back. Uh, every time we get hit with a critical, uh, we will hit even stronger blows back at our enemies. This lower resolve will help get the give the enemies an ability to crit us more i'm assuming that's where that comes into play anyways let's try it out i don't know i usually don't like starting anything at three but let's see what happens so resolve is our internal drive determination fearlessness and emotional intensity that can protect others it can be useful for mental intimidation leadership and convincing performances in combat, it helps character maintain concentration and contributes to the will and deflection defensive. So our concentration, our deflection, and our will, not so great. And I don't think a four is really going to help out with that. Just go straight low resolve. Feel like Dex is going to be more important for the Barbarian. We're going to go from the Living Lands, mountainous region of the large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystem varies dramatically from valley to valley. The Living Lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. 21 might. That's how we're starting off with Mr. Lugs. And he gets a little bit cooler armor. Now, I present to you the first surprise of this Let's Play. Oh, let's go uh, mercenary. You battle your way through life. You solve problems by pulling out your weapon and applying. Uh, we don't even need to read the others. Portrait time. My uh, good long-distant friend, who I call Sai, um, who is, if any of you have been keeping up with the channel, all know has done some really, really amazing fan art for me. Well, I got with Sai earlier today and told him that this Let's Play was going to start. And I asked him, Sai, look, could you make a custom Lug Lug portrait for this game? He's like, sure, fuck it. That was this morning. Start sending me sketches, rough drafts. I sent him a picture of the Amua that we'd uh, end up using here. Because it was pretty obvious at that point that Lug Lug was going to be chosen. 
and uh, I decided to go the Amua. He actually initially started drawing a dwarf, uh, but then I decided, no, let's go with the big giant guy, because that's, that's who Lug Lug is in the end. He's the giant, not the dwarf. So I sent him some snapshots, and he sent me a custom portrait, which I think fits in quite well. Now we just have to fix some things because Lug Lug goes bald in Dark Sun and he shall be bald in Pillars of Eternity. Got some great dues here. Might be a, t a little too light. I kind of like the sandy. There we go. One of the pictures I sent him had the, the light reflecting off of Lug Lug's head. And you can kind of see it there. That's mimics quite well. So that is, he, he sent me this the same day I asked for it. So <laughs> I just, you, you can tell. Look at how he mimicked the armor. It's fucking beautiful. Um, so anyways, thank you so much, Sai. Your uh, art is amazing as usual. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but I will tell you guys that the portrait may change throughout the game. Um, so, we're working on some ideas with that. All right, colors... I think we're good. Well, we're going to go with Sinister because we are going to do an evil let's play. like this initially because this over here kind of has that desert sand look was that just fix the portrait perfect And we got a small version as well. Let's do this. The Gilded Veil. The Caravan Master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded Vale's less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink, called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Odemo looks over his shoulder at his assistant, 
a lanky, intense man named Sparfo, who carries an old Sun Beach leech bow. Sparfo nods, nods and slides the warm bow over his shoulder. Hello everyone, Lug Lug here. Hope you're ready for lots of Lug Lug dialogue. Where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. What's in the effigy? Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. He adds it with a wink. Your character's attributes, skills, class, race, culture, and sex may all open up options for you in dialogue. These options are not necessarily superior to other responses, but give you a wider variety of choices to select from. The manner in which someone responds to your choices depends on their individual personality and attitude. Don't have a shitty attitude. We're going to leave the tutorial messages up because I need them. Who did build the runes? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Ingwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. Ingwithans? Is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. Lug Lug no hurry at anything. And not if the weather holds up. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year, rain mostly, and wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick. Born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself, never care to. What are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground? Look like Lug Lug's nuts. They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. Lug Lug have many stories for you. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The sole butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. I'm gonna go see about these berries then, so I don't shit my guts out. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! Bye-bye, Kalisha! The woman looks up, on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. I like her! What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her, you're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. He cast a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, We'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. The wind can tickle my nuts! You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. Okay. Let's see here. Um, I have a lot to learn and teach myself. I didn't really play around with this interface too much. I figured y'all would get a kick out of watching me blunder about. Anyways, of course. I'm a big dude. That's how Anyone Lug Lug should supplies? be. I've got sundries for sale. I like being taller than everyone. And I like having custom portraits. Shout out to Sai! Well? 68 endurance, 404 health. 
We have our attack, our cancel, our select all, formation. As it we moves wish. similar to Baldur's Gate from what I can gather so far. You got your pause combat. We have our inventory. You can check out some of my cool Kickstarter gifts. I got the Cloak of Obsidian Order. The Obsidian Order is shrouded in mystery, even with the Hand Occult having few clues about their origins. Some scholars have speculated that the Order's members are a diverse group from all over Eora, brought together by their love of exploration, fierce battle, and wondrous stories. Cloak of Obsidian. There's just some kind of cool starter gifts for being a backer. That is the Obsidian logo there, of course. Is there a way to zoom in on this? I don't think so. I also have a tiny Obsidian worm. This is one of my pets. The small worm scales gleam like dark glass. The creature all but vanishes in darkness, save for its bright little eyes, like twin rubies, and faint smoke rising occasionally from its nostrils. Contrary to its fierce kin, it seems content to shadow your steps and curl up amongst your belongings. Curl up next to my fucking cool astral pig, that is. Giant miniature space piglet. This tiny titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. These might have also been DLC or something that you can get. I don't know. They were offered as Kickstarter perks. Gaunt's Pledge. It's a ring. Grants Gaunt's Pledge to Peress. This item grants the ability to shield the wearer from a myriad perils that plague the world of Eora, an aspect of the gods of Eothos. Gone represents the harvest of old age, symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Gone helps protect the dignity of old age, so too does his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before their time. Grants the ability to shield the wearer from the myriad perils that plague the world of Eora. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but let's put it on. It's not changing any of my statistics. And we can put a pet down there. Let's uh, let's check or get to check them both out, obviously. Okay, we're done with moving toward a character accelerates how quickly they will detect you. If you actually touch the selection circle of a character with your own, you will immediately be detected. Uh, we have all our wonderful slots here. This is what makes an RPG or horny in the first place is the, the fucking doll sheet, the character creation, or the character sheet. Uh, damage. Looks like we've got some slashing and piercing going on with our great sword. Renowned for its ability to cause deadly wounds, even against terrible beasts. Though it is a relatively slow weapon and require the use of both hands, it's a truly devastating motherfucker by a skilled warrior. Huh? What's a motherfucker? Oh, lug lug, you fucked lots of mothers. Be quiet. All right, um, let's see. Choo, choo, choo. Armor. Items. We can also look at Felicia. I mean, Kalicia. She... She cannot have a pig pet. But she's wielding a torch and a battle axe. And we can kind of see all the other attributes and class and race. She's a fighter. Uh, Deerwood Explorer. She's uh, only level one with zero experience, so I don't know why she's acting so cocky. Some decent attributes. Constant recovery. I mean, you can zoom in on everything here. I mean, this is how I'm going to learn is kind of looking at this stuff off camera. And on camera, but 
really looking at it off camera so we're not wasting a whole lot of time but these first few videos will obviously be slow as I acclimate to the new game and of course here we have Lug Lug's sheet Living Lands Mercenary 21 strength giving him plus 33 percent damage there are eight damage types in pillars slash pierce crash burn shock corrode freeze and raw damage I like it raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. All right. Um, so we'll dive kind of more into that throughout the game. I don't want to go analysis paralysis on it quite yet. I do, do want to go through the different functions and icons. So we have our quest sheet, our journal, our cyclopedia, our notes. Holy shit, this game is intense. See, this is a game that makes me proud to have backed. Unlike many, many others. Uh, we have our map. Very, 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 very reminiscent of Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Torment. Uh, we have our Stronghold, which we do not own yet. I remember that coming up as a stretch goal during the Kickstarter campaign, and it was one of the last stretch goals that we, I believe we barely got it, or we didn't even reach it. But the post sales for the game, the PayPal sales, enabled us to get the stronghold so you're welcome i helped contribute that fucking stronghold and is in the game because of me and 77 76,999 other people but i was one of them my name's gonna be in the credits uh options all this good stuff we don't really need to mess with i'm playing this in an actual uh i'm not even getting to play this full screen since I'm recording it, I'm playing it in a 1080p window, which on a 4K monitor is um, a fourth of the screen. So, um, yeah. That's how I like to play all my games. Nice zoom, digging that. Okay. It won't see me come. Let's play the fucking game. Oh, check out my drag drag. These badass guys, look at them. Come here, little man. Come here, little man. Oh, yeah, he's he's a fucking cutie. I'm going to get tons of women with that thing. Um, let's check out my pig. I want to see my space pig now. Oh, there he is. Look at that motherfucker. He is awesome. Little kick-ass astral pig, yo. All right. He's going to be my default for now. Not everyone's walking around with an astral pig, but Lug Lug is. Hmm? Now I can control her independently, right? Awesome. Just like in Baldur's Gate and all those beautiful Bioware what games it? we're used to. Let's talk around the uh, encampment here. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hadn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire. But I've been trying to establish new business out here. Life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? Okay. Now remember, we are going to do an evil LP, so for the most part I'll be picking the obvious cruel answer. How incredibly naive! I'm surprised you've lasted this long! He folds his arms, surveys the wagon. And I suppose I should be counting my blessings. You now have one rank and disposition reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations often bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in pillars. I don't have much of a choice because I have chosen the path of the asshole. Something else you need? 
Looks like we're settled for the night. Why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Ray and Saris. <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. Good for you! He shrugs. Dalehood is a former idea colony, so it seems like a good place to start. But as much as I admire the Red Sirens worth Hecate, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. Interesting. Wait, did he just read that? Oh my god. It's been a late night. I wanted to stay up. I actually just got off of work. And uh, I wanted to at least do one video. I'm just so excited to start playing this. So as soon as it was midnight, boom. Time to start. Let's see. Rational. Seems like you got the short end of the stick. Or diplomatic. I don't think Lug Lug, Evil Lug Lug is a diplomatic character. I think he is rational. That's, well, maybe sometimes. Let's go with the neutral answer. Sounds reasonable enough. Out here, I'm just taking it one day at a time. Tell me about the Adir Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. A fact our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Let's see what shit you got. All right. I'm going to hit, uh, let's see. Store allow you to trade, sell your items for copper pieces. Wait, copper? Copper, huh? Copper is for assholes. Merchants buy items from you. Greatly reduce prices. If you sell something, you may see it appear in the store's inventory with a much higher cost. Do we get silver and dreadfire? Or deadfire? <laughs> <laughs> the currency is copper. All right, I like it. Starting off groveling. I guess they couldn't go copper, gold, piece, platinum, silver, because that'd be an obvious D&D ripoff. So we just went straight copper. I don't know. It just seems like a, I'm, I'm actually interested in the reasoning behind that and not the standard gold that every single RPG and its mother does nowadays. And even back in the day. Anyways, I have 100 s copper, and I'm going to save it. Come on, pig. These graphics are phenomenal. Oh. Oh. Oh, I forgot about the tab key. Just like in the other Bioware games, holding down tab highlights certain things that you can interact with. Potion of Minor Regeneration. These blue-green liquids are attributed with powers of recuperation, restoring energy and liveliness to the wear or morose for a period of time. Trust me, if your dick is limp, give this a sip. This is a take-all, I'm assuming. Don't mind old Dana. This is a good place to camp as any. Caravan life doesn't agree with you, does it? You look as raw as that merchant Hilden. Huh? I'll give it to you, raw. Bitch. Got these interesting... Lug lug testicle size out... Rocks coming out of the ground, like outcroppings, kind of? Tall glass screen pillars appear as though they've sprouted from the earth. The flickering fire sets shadows dancing within. They're really cool looking. I like the, the light refraction that they did off of it. The, the light reflection and refraction. Did I say that right? I don't know. Nor do I care. I'll see it done. Oh. Uh, right click attack. All right, we also need to find out our save button, because that's always important for the game hoarder who likes to die a lot. 
There'll be some dickhead that watches this LP and tells me how bad I suck at it. Because, you know, I've played it so fucking much. F5, that makes sense. Alright, well, let me see if I can just break it open. You got the mechanics zero. I'll see it done. Where there's a pick, there's a way. I'll see it done. I'll see there's it a done. pick, there's a way. I'll see it done. Can't you just break it open? I guess not. You guys will have to tell me if I'm doing that wrong. All kinds of beasts in the woods. And then you have the tribes. I've traveled with Odemo before. He's never led us astray. It's best not to wander alone, especially so near the ruins. I suppose you wouldn't know much about Glenfathers, a mighty protective of places like this. Glenfathers. No, I don't really know shit about them at all. I see more and more people on the roads these days looking for safety in towns and cities, it seems. All right, well, let's go find these berries before I die. Well? Exploration is the key and pillars of eternity. As you make your way through the eastern reach, try not to get on the beach. Open the area map to see what parts of the map you've already been to and what's left to explore. But watch out for that dirty whore on the third floor. Barfell. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. You hurry up with my water, Sparfell. Let's check by those outcroppings. Oh shit. Our first battle in PoE. The combat system uses a pausable real-time system because you'll often manage more than one character at a time. It's a good idea to pause the game, issue orders, and resume real-time to see the orders play out. The options menu also contains many choices for automatic pausing when certain conditions are met. Okay. Let's see what we can find out about this young wolf. So we click on him. You can see in the upper left corner question marks next to the defenses because we haven't fought this beast yet I'm sure as we get more uh, attuned to each of the beast creatures monsters animals killing them multiple times we're gonna start to learn more and more things about them I think it's safe to say we could probably just let this play out get a astral pig one of your characters has been engaged in melee when characters are engaged they immediately stop moving if they move again they'll provoke a disengagement it's a Dungeons and Dragons rule that made it into the game. Attack from enemies engaging them. Your characters will also automatically engage enemies when they initiate attacks against them in melee. I mean, disengaging makes sense. If you run away, someone's going to get a swipe at you. I'm just used to disengaging from playing Dungeons and Dragons. All characters in the game, friend or foe, have four primary defenses. Deflection, Fortitude, Reflex, and Will. These defenses are based on the character's attributes level. Attributes level, items, and other effects. Accuracy is compared to the appropriate defenses when an attack is made. If accuracy is below the targeted defense, the attack suffers a penalty to the roll and is more likely to result in a miss. If the accuracy is above the targeted defense, the attack is more likely to result in a crit. Damage reduction, aka DR, it reduces incoming damage by the list of the man amount down to the minimum percentage. If you're having difficulty hurting an enemy, try switching to a weapon or attack that does different damage type. Most enemies are strong against one or two damage types and weak against a similar number. Well, this is a fleshy wolf and he's gonna 
He's gonna feel my sword. Boom! Oh, you got smoked with a torch, you're on fire and shit. The wolf bit Kalisha. But go killed the wolf. And you can see here we got some percentage on our bestiary progress of learning more and more about it. That's that's a really cool aspect of the game as well. The wolves of the Deerwood are a large and crafty breed, bereft of the species' usual shyness, and they present a serious hazard to travelers who venture off the beaten path. Hunters who seek them out will not usually contend with a single wolf, for they travel in packs of varying size, presenting a challenge to any lone hunter. Their fairy hides are valued for warmth, and they can provide. And the teeth of the strongest wolves make for impressive trophies. With five couple pieces. Take it. Some kind of dead I deer carcass wish. here, intestines like disemboweled like a son bitch. This Look is at it. that. Springberries. As you receive quest, your journal will update. You look like you've seen your share of action. What'd you do before you came out here? Yeah. How is it you happen to come here? Let's just say I don't have the most sparkling of reputations at home. Here I'm anonymous. Well, we've all got things we'd like to leave behind. God know I do. I'll tell you that. Here's hoping they never track us down. <clears throat> Kalisha breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way. But I always did like it. Lord Redrick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot. No! I'm just passing through! That's usually the case with the big city. Just a little ways further up the same road. Where you headed. This bitch talks a lot! Somewhere I can make money! Ah, uh, man after my own heart. May your luck be better than mine. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Oh, demo, give me an ear, Phil. Let's be on our way. Why are you here? Galicia sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some times back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried. But that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out. And that's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Ix in Ixmetil. Zamatil? You guys are gonna have to tell me how to say that fucking word, because I don't have a clue. Is it Ix or Zam? Zamit. Zamatil. But I'd do anything for her. Well, she's a much better woman than me, so I'm here and we'll see. Odema I've worked before. Worked with before. He doesn't usually drive her out this way, but he's doing it for me. Tell me about yourself. You're pretty hot. I've got, I've got simple needs. I like open skies and far horizons. I find work that lets me live that way. My family wanders too. We started in Deerwood. But my parents ended up in the living lands. That's where I'm from! I've got a brother in Rautai. And another in Adir. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the only real home buddy. What can you tell me about this Deerwood? I hate deer. I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Idea Empire. Broke off after a war some years back. The locals here are feisty. And that's how they like it. I've been out of touch. I've been hearing weird kinds of things about it lately. People having trouble giving birth, I guess. A lot of them. Been going on for years now, but somehow it's getting worse. With an uneasy tremor in her voice, she adds, I'll have to ask my sisters more about it. All right, let's get back to camp. You're starting to make me nervous. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath if Sparfell's getting you water any time soon. He does what he feels like, and when he feels like it. We should check up on him first, slap him around a little. 
Stream's just down that way. Come on, let's get your water. As you receive quests, your journal will update with relevant information. If you ever get stuck, open it up and review your fucking notes. And remember the tad key. Party has gained 170 experience. Got some burned lady in my stash. Whoa. This my stash? Yes, it is. Found on tall, distinctly shaped shrubs, these large pink berries are both sweet and frequently used in various medicines, not only to obscure the taste. Burned lady. Despite their humble appearance, these small brown mushrooms are prized for their taste. Their caps are round and distinctively shaped, with small circular depressions dotting the surface. They won't make you hallucinate, unfortunately. Give me an F5. That's a refresh. Refreshing my save game. Game hoarder, you're so vanilla, dude. You quick save all the time, you're afraid to die. Ultima 7 sucks, dude. You should play The Witcher. The bridge. Let's cross it. Hello. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least you left the water skins. Come on. Crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kalisha waits nearby, keeping a watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. You gained a quest item. A full water skin. Out of the tree submerge, emerges Sparta, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gait, his stride wobbly as he moves towards you with labored breath. Sparful, are you all right? Sparful's toe catches a rock. He collapses forward in a heap, the feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Hell no. I am the Fury. What has she got? Knocked down. Shoves an enemy with enormous force, knocking the shit out of him. Let's try it. What is it? Oh, she got him. Look at that blood spitting up. It's fucking dope. Frenzy time on the Glen Favin Hunter. What is it? Hey, what are you doing, dude? Over here. Archer's got a big old lug lug in his face. Bash the bitch up. Come on, we have to get back to Kale. Uh-uh. Lug Lug gonna search some dead bodies first. Dudes are dead, that's what it is. 
A deer cow. The footprints around the campfire are indistinct. It may have been here for days or longer. It's a beer! Cheers to that. I just refilled mine. Let's clank it up. Prost. Skal. You can stop with the battle music. He's dead. Alright, many spells and abilities it? and pillars have a limited number of uses. An ability that can be used a number of times per encounter will have all of its uses restored when the combat ends. Ability that can be used a number of times per rest will only be restored when you rest at an end or use camping supplies. Yes. That is this game's version of 5th edition D&D Short Rest Long Rest. Did I look at fire? Yes. The corpse is cold to the touch and ripe smell wafts from its putrid, putrid waves. A dark crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple lining linen cloth. Whoa, leather armor and lockpicks. Gimme gimme. Yes. Onward pick! Oh, look at this. What is it? <laughs> Change the targets. Big damage. Charge! Take it all. As you wish. As long as we can carry it, why not? All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Kalisha puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from the bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe with thick beard tassels and knots and shit, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize as Hyoden, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Oh, let's see. Nothing cruel. Lore. Yeah. Lug Lug is one of a passionate, passionate nature. Murderers! You will pay with each life! Death willed by the gods is not murder, but righteousness. You have trespassed in places of which no mortal man is worthy. The debt is not ours to pay, but yours. So I say again, lay down your arms. 
Don't trust them. They mean to kill us all. Only a fool attacks a weak enemy, while a stronger one yet lives. The man considers this, looking you up and down. Hmm. Yet. He shoves Hidden towards you. As he does so, the man rakes his blade against Hidden's torso. Hidden screams and stumbles forward, a wide gash in his clothing beginning to bloom crimson. The man sets his feet to engage you, his axe raised high. Let's take out the weak ones first. Try to save Hidden. Oh, I give that motherfucker. Look at that. Good. You scored a crit. A crit is a better result than a hit and more likely to fuck that guy up. Attacks that do damage will do more damage on a crit. Attacks that inflict status effects or afflictions will have increased duration on a crit. Grazes are worse than hits and suffer decreased damage and effect. Duriations. Gotcha. Your enemy lies supine in the ground, unable to rise. His companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezy and fitful gasp. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good. Good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you it feels as though it is rendering you a part within. Rending, not rendering, it's not rendering, no. That's happening throughout the entire game, actually. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bow, Odema's body stirs, and with great effort he rises, his sagging head, his eyes barely open, he looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! It's the wind of oh fuck. It didn't let me close my window. Straining against the gale that threatens to pull you off your feet, with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With the last burst of energy, before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. He had entrails behind, slowed by the injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who has been feigning death lunges for Hiedin and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hiedin lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you, despite the wind from your position. If you were to throw your weapon at the attacker, you would have a good chance at hitting your mark. Nah, he's on his own! Resting free of the attacker's grip, Hiedin lands a blow that sends the assailant reeling and makes a mad dash for the ledge upon which you stand. Suddenly, as he reaches for the rock face, his body jerks back and is rigid, as though it were a bow being strung. His shrieks of pain grow panicked, abandoned of all restraint, like someone tethered to a stake and set to flame. A slender wisp of spectral light emerges from his back, rising out of him like smoke before separating itself and disappearing into the ether. All at once the screams stop, and Hidden is dead. There's a deep resonance to the wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet, and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections and settling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. The mechanic skill is used to pick lockpits and disarm traps in this world. 
to tinker with machines and shit. Glasses like rogues and channers. Get all the bitches. That was... We should be dead. Lug Lug don't die. Where the fuck you been? We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. That's what he said. <laughs> Never mind. 858 experience. Total quest experience. All right. Questicles and chesticles amongst the resticles. And we're now in the caved in area. The lower level of the rooms has been blocked off by fallen rubble. As you wish. And we are going to wrap it up here, folks. I hope you've enjoyed the first episode of Pillars of Eternity. And I hope you come back for more. Thanks for your time and your patience, everyone. Bless the Horde. <laughs>